Aye. And the agenda is approved. We have uh, minutes from the regular meeting of March 13th, 2019. Is there a motion to approve the March 13th minutes? So moved. Commissioner Bud, support? Support. Commissioner Kelly, um, any corrections or changes on the minutes? None. Then all in favor of approving the March 13, 2019 minutes, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And the minutes are approved. First item on tonight's agenda, we have a couple of public hearings. Item one is a rezoning. The applicant, Carl G. Speaks, is requesting to rezone the property located at 13440 Martinsville Road from M1, which is light industrial, to R1B, single family residential. The subject property located at 13440 Martinsville Road is parcel ID 83-105-99-0003-2023. Um, we'll first have a presentation by the applicant, um, but before we do that, can we have a motion to open the public hearing, please? So moved. Mr. Boynton, support. support. Mr. Kelly, all in favor say aye. 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 And the public hearing is now open, so we, we would welcome comments on this agenda item. There's a, um, another public hearing and other agenda items later in the meeting. If you would like to speak to this item, if you would come to the podium, <coughs> tell us your name and address, and if you would keep your comments specific to this agenda item, there'll be plenty of time to speak on other items later on in the meeting. But first, we'll hear from Mr. Speaks. Can you come up? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am, when I bought the property, I did not know it was industrial property. Okay. So now I was interested in selling it, and the bank won't give him a loan. <laughs> so because I you reside, re I need to rezone it. To okay, you need to reside on the property now, correct? No. 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 But there's a house there. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, and we've had a review by staff, so we'll hear that um, that review, and then we'll see if there are any comments to be heard on the, on the agenda item. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Director Akers or Ms. Stamper. Um, I, I, I'll I'll go through it. Thank. Great. You. Thank you. The applicants, and, and, and you know, just for clarification, I did one review for both uh, items, the rezoning for 13440 Martinsville and then 13510 Martinsville as they're next door to one another and uh, cover similar characteristics. So they requested to rezone the above uh, the mentioned properties from M1 Light Industrial to R1B Single Family Residential. The existing use of the parcels is already uh, single family residential and there's single family homes currently on the properties. Um, and the future land use map also designates these properties as residential. So uh, the current zoning actually does not fit the use or the, the future uh, land use for these properties. Um, as Mr. Speaks had indicated, the primary purpose for the request is that one of the property owners is working towards selling the home and the purchaser is having a difficulty working with their lender uh, due to the residential use being legal nonconforming as the property zone light industrial. So what I'll do is I'll just give a brief um, overview of the staff report, brief overview of the findings, and, uh, and I'll, I'll highlight what my recommendation is. But um, as I had indicated above, the future land use map designates the properties as residential, specifically the village residential district from our south side master plan. Um, the ma maximum density for the village residential district is uh, approximately 4.15 units per acre with a minimum lot size of 8,400 square feet. The Township zoning ordinance does not have a village residential zoning district. Uh, and when we look at the zoning ordinance, the closest match to the minimum lot size for the district would be R1C. Um, the current request, however, is for R1B, which is uh, similar to many of the parcels in the same area, specifically those that abut Savage Road um, on towards the, uh, towards the west of this property. Um, the R1B district, the current dimensional requirements has a minimum lot size of 10,000 square feet and a minimum lot width of 80 feet, um, which is actually consistent with the lot width of these two parcels. And uh, the lot size is a little bit bigger than 10,000 square feet, but as far as lot size goes, uh, uh, it, the 80 feet is consistent. Um, so due to the existing width of the parcels, the close proximity of other R1B properties in the vicinity and due to the same permitted uses being allowed in the R1B as the R1C district, uh, staff finds us that proposed rezoning would be 
consistent with the township's master plan. Um, <coughs> to kind of go through, uh, our zoning ordinance has uh, in section 12.502 standards of review for zoning ordinance amendments. Um, I'm not going to go through each individual, each one individually, as there's I think 12 or 13 different items. But I just did want to highlight that staff found the applicant has met all of those requirements in that section of the zoning ordinance. Um, so based on that, staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the request to rezone the two parcels at 13440-13510 Martinsville Road uh, from M1 Light Industrial to R1B Single Family Residential based upon the reasons lifted, listed in the staff report. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. Great. Thanks so much. Let's see, anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this agenda item? Any questions or comments from the commission? We also live next to Carl, and we are interested in selling ours, and we have a buyer, so that's why we're also requesting. Okay, great. And you're the next item on the Okay, great. I know that it seems a little redundant, but because of a rezoning and different parcels, we'll probably go through it twice and say some of the same things, but um, we want to be clear and we want to be legal. So, okay, thanks for telling me. Um, all right, so questions or comments? Last chance from the audience. Anyone in the commission? Is there a motion to close the public hearing, please? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Budd, support <laughs> Commissioner Kelly. All in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 And the public hearing on this first agenda item is now closed. So that takes us to item number two, our second public hearing, which is also a rezoning. Um, let me read the specifics. The applicant, Bobby A. Brown, is requesting to rezone the property located at 13510 Martinsville Road from M1 Light Industrial to R1B Single Family Residential. The subject property is parcel ID 83-105-99-0004-000. Um, we'll have a motion to open this public hearing, please. So moved. Commissioner Kelly, Board. support Commissioner Boynton. All in favor say aye. 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 And same rules as we said a couple of minutes ago. Um, if you want to speak to this agenda item, come on up to the podium. Be tell us your name and address. Be specific to this item. Chance to speak on other items later. But first we'll ask Mr. Brown if he'll just tell us um, what his request is about. Yep, I'm Bobby Brown. And I've lived on this property for over 30 years, and we didn't really know it was zoned light industrial. Yeah. So we put it up for sale, and we're having problems trying to get rid of it. So that's what we're doing here, to just get it changed over and, and be happy. <laughs> okay, okay? Thank you so much. All right, thank you. So, Director Akers, we've heard your review on uh, the, the neighboring parcel, which has very similar circumstances. Um, anything you want to highlight on this? Um, the, the, the request, because the properties are next door to each other, the future land use designation and zoning are similar. So, so the findings that we have and uh, that we uh, listed in the first report are exactly the same for this property. So okay. um, the findings and the recommendation are exactly the same. The township is recommending that the Planning Commission re, uh, recommend rezoning of the property uh, to the township board from M1 Light Industrial to R1B Single Family. Thanks so much. Anyone in the audience who would like to speak to this agenda item? Anyone at the commission? Questions or comments? Seems very straightforward and a simple request. Mm -hmm. uh, last chance for the audience? All right, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Commissioner Boynton, support? Support. Commissioner Kelly, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, so the public hearing is closed. So that's a requirement that we have a public hearing and give people a chance to come in and comment. So now we've done with that. We're going to go to new business on the agenda. And under new business, item one and item two are both rezonings. The first one for the property at 13440 Martinsville Road, and the second one for the property at 13510 Martinsville Road. Um, if there is not a concern by the commission, I think we can take the recommendation to Township Board as one motion um, mm -hmm. for both of these parcels. Um, but let me just double check. Anybody want to say anything else? Any questions or comments? Something we missed? In that case, I'll entertain a motion, please. Madam Chair. Mr. Boynton. I move that we grant the applicants, Carl G. Sparks, uh, to rezone a property located at 13440.
13440 Martinsville Road from M1 Light Industrial to R1B Single Family Residential. Um, parcel number 83-105-99-0003-000. And also for the applicant, Bobby A. Brown, who is also a uh, grant um, rezoning of the property located at 13510 Martinsville Road from M1 Light Industrial to R1B Single Family Residential. Uh, parcel ID number 83-105-99-0004-0003. Um, subject to the recommendations of the letter provided by staff dated March 19th of 2019. Yeah, they're both on that one. And this is a recommendation to the board. Correct. Yes. All right. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there support? Support. Support Commissioner Kelly. It's a roll call vote, please. Donald Boyd. Yes. Brian Kelly. Yes. 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 So the recommendation now goes forward to the Township Board. Thank you both, Mr. Speaks, Mr. Brown, and your families. We appreciate your time and, and wish you the best of luck with your future endeavors. <laughs> All right. We are to item three under new business. This is TNT Fireworks temporary land use request, to, uh, a, a temporary land use permit to conduct a temporary outdoor fireworks tent sale. The location is 10562 Belleville Road. The site is located in the Walmart parking lot on the west side of Belleville Road, north of the I-94 North Service Drive. And we'll start with presentation by the applicant. So the applicant actually called this afternoon and indicated they were unable to come. They have requested that we just continue to do the review anyway. But um, if the commission would like to postpone this and do it at the next meeting, that is also an option. Great. Thanks, Ms. Stamper. Um, it's usually been our policy that if the applicant's not here, we don't review. That is correct. Um, we also have reviewed this applicant and similar applications. How many years now? This is the fifth time. Fifth, this will be the fifth year, four years. So it's up, it's up to you all. Madam Chair. Commissioner Boynton. I guess my only concern would be what was uh, stated in the letter from March 14th from our um, fire marshal, um, which is in the letter it says that um, the only concern is the map indicating where the tent will be does not include the 10 foot radius that come out into the aisles on the north and south side of the tent. This has been an unresolved issue in the past couple of years. This shall be corrected prior to uh, VBT uh, CMO. And I would like okay. to make sure that we address with the applicant that this has been taken care of. So you're suggesting that we wait until we can speak to the applicant? Yes. All right. Anyone have any other different thoughts? Yeah. I, I would agree with that to adjourn it to allow them to answer for, uh, okay. for the issue stated. Great. Um, do we need to take a formal action on that? Um, it, would, it would be a motion to postpone, yes. So moved. To a date to be determined? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, um, could be a motion to postpone to allow the applicant to address the comments in the fire marshal's report. Still so moved. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> and support. Commissioner Kelly, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. All right. So we'll hear back from TNT Fireworks when they get their uh, their tent position cleared up. Uh, next on tonight's agenda, this would be item four under new business, DTE Energy Site Plan Amendment. The applicant, Matt, how do you say Matt's last name? Glasgow. 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 Thank you, Matt. Matt Velasco is requesting an amendment to the existing site plan for DTE Energy to perform an outdoor lighting upgrade and add additional site lighting for display purposes on the site location of 8001 Hagerty Road. The site is located in the existing DTE Western Wayne Center on the east side of Hagerty Road between Ecorse Road and Tyler Road. And we'll start with a presentation. Good evening. Hi. 
Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Ray Zoya. I'm a manager at DT Energy. I, uh, Matt reports to me. And we both work at uh, DT on 8001 Haggerty Road. Great. Um, go ahead. So, um, I, I, Ron reviewed the plans, the lighting plans, and then we got the response the other day. And uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the, the plans. Okay. okay, you've reviewed the plans, and we're asking. Uh, we're uh, real happy with uh, your decision. Um, we just ask if we can have a variance on item B, 1B, right. uh, fix for fixture X uh, for the demonstration area. And if we could, we'll explain why we're asking for that. That's a fixture that's going to be installed on a wood pole for demonstration and training use only. It would be only illuminated if we were going to be training a contractor or showcasing it to a customer. It'll have network controls on it where we can turn it on from our cell phone and turn the rest of the lighting off. We anticipate that this is probably going to be less than two hours a year, if that, to showcase that fixture. It, it probably, the frequency would happen, you know, once, twice uh, a month, and it would be maybe in five minute to 10 minute um, time period that we may be, we'd have our contractor um, training with the uh, luminaire and uh, it is a floodlight, uh, obviously. Um, and uh, we just, uh, it, it's gonna be on network control. So all the demonstration areas, the area lighting will be on dust to dawn 365 days a year. Um, the demonstration areas where we're, it's gonna be a, a lighting center where we're gonna show our product also to um, municipalities and uh, commercial industrial uh, and residential. customers, res residential customers um, of all of our lighting products. So it's it's a big um, deal at DTE, um, and we'd like to. Uh, so it, it's request. like a showroom. Like yes. I can come it's and an outdoor say, showroom where a okay. customer can come visit us, be accompanied by a sales manager or account manager and we have a control system that will allow us to turn all the other lights off and showcase it one light at a time but your showroom operates at unusual business hours then it will be in during the, the evening evening it, it would be early evening um just you know when uh the sunset uh just after sunset you know we're not going to have customers out there at 11 o'clock at night it would probably be you know, just depending on the time of year with uh, daylight savings time, but we're, we try to keep it to a minimum. Um, we might even be using it periodically during the evening hours when it's not so dark, just to, uh, for our engineering purposes, to look at uh, our luminaires. Um, so, so basically, the demonstration areas will not be on uh, throughout the year except for these small intervals of time. Um, and it's going to show all of our products that we have um, as our in our inventory. Okay. And let me um, make sure I understand. It's B, fixture X that you're asking? That is correct. Okay. We agree with the other two recommendations. A fixture G will be replaced, and fixture FF will be replaced with an approved fixture. Okay. 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 Um, I think we'll hear the review letter from Director Akers. Um, you're welcome to stay here or be seated, but there will probably be some questions, and we'll have you come back up. All right. Uh, Director Akers, you want to walk us through the review, please? Thank you. Um, just to give an overview of the, the, the project at 8001 Haggerty Road, uh, DTE has proposed to install several light fixtures from their site, and they, they really are for two main purposes. The first is that DTE is proposing to uh, replace fixtures on the site for general parking lot lighting. And the second person is that, as the applicant has indicated, uh, the DTE wants to provide several lighting options on the site to display to prospective municipal and other clients um, when they are looking at the different type of light fixtures to install for street and parking lot lighting. Um, I overviewed in the letter how the plans were organized, uh, just, just to kind of assist the planning commission but but the way the, the plans were organized there was a set which looked at what the general lighting was going to be so their dust to dawn 365 lighting um, that's their main parking lot lighting they gave a separate set of photometric plans for that um, and then they also gave separate set of photometric plans which included that lighting 
in addition to each zone that they could turn on for their display lighting. So the planning commission, I think there were five or six different photometric plans, um, and and each one of those photometric plans represents, you know, the the or with the exception of the general one, the ones with the display lighting represent the general lighting in addition to having one of those additional zones on. So I just I just wanted to be clear that that's what we had reviewed um, as they were going through the uh, the plans. So the applicant has specified that you know they're not going to have every single zone on at one time. They're going to you know there will only be one zone on at any given time. So the photometric plans are are reflective of that. Um, so we've reviewed this based on the township's exterior lighting standards, which are in uh, Article, I believe, eight of the zoning ordinance. Um, and so just to kind of give an overview of some of those standards that we had looked at, so. Uh, Zoning and use the property zone light industrial, and they currently use it for offices and equipment storage for DTE Energy. Um, we reviewed the light trespass limits as far as exterior lighting. So, as many of you know, the township has a requirement that the uh, light trespass from a property shall not exceed 0 0.5 foot candles at the part at the lot line. Um, we did review the photometric plans, and as it depicts the property line on the map, it. Um, <coughs> It does not encroach the 0.5 foot candles, um, with the exception, if, if you actually look at the maps, it would be the northeast corner of the site. Um, where it depicts the property lines, it, it shows that it does actually exceed the 0.5 foot candle there. However, I do know that, and I did verify that that property that it spills onto is also owned by DTE. So it's because it's all part of their development, it, it wouldn't uh, exceed the requirements of our zoning ordinance. Um, so with regards to light trespass limit, limits, the photometric pans provided do uh, meet the requirements of our ordinance. The second issue that we reviewed is with regards to fixture height. Um, as many of you know, the township zoning ordinance limits the height of light fixtures to 25 feet. However, the zoning ordinance does give the Planning Commission discretion to approve lighting fixtures in industrial districts of up to 35 feet, um, so long as the proposed lighting doesn't have any adverse impacts on surrounding land uses. Um, the maximum proposed uh, height fixture for the general area lighting poles and the display poles is 30 feet. Um, and the surrounding land uses, uh, just to give an overview, are industrial to the south and west. They have a freeway, uh, I-275 is to the east, and then there is a, a home and a, a business to the north of the property. Based on the photometric plan, and because uh, that area does not exceed the foot candle requirement, um, these taller fixtures uh, should not have an adverse impact on any of these parcels. Um, so based on that, uh, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission do grant the applicant to install the light fixtures of up to 30 feet tall. Um, the other, the last item that we reviewed as part of our exterior lighting standards was shielding. Uh, the zoning ordinance requires that the outdoor light be shielded so that uh, all outdoor lighting can be directed toward and confined to the ground area. Uh, it also requires that the owners use, uh, they, they call them full cutoff fixtures, which prevents light from projecting above a 90 degree horizontal plane. And uh, I actually copy and paste the diagram in our zoning ordinance and put it into the staff report. But based on this, the vast majority of the fixtures do meet the zoning ordinance requirements. Um, but the, however, there are a handful which do not meet the requirements of the township zoning ordinance. These include many of the floodlight fixtures. So it's fixtures uh, G, X, and the wall pack fixture FF, um, which are all LED floodlights. Uh, based on the township zoning ordinance, these, these, these fixtures won't be able to be installed. Um, the one item that I did want to highlight <coughs> is that uh, the decorative fixtures are exempted from the shielding provisions of the zoning ordinance um, in, our, in our zoning ordinance. So any of the decorative fixtures that they put up, while they're not full cut off, they're actually uh, uh, exempted under our ordinance. So that way we can be allowed to, uh, the applicants can be allowed to use them. Um, so based on that, uh, the recommendation is to approve the changes uh, to the site lighting at 8 1001 Haggerty, subject to the conditions that the applicant not install the uh, prior specified fixtures, and that the Planning Commission allows the applicants to install light fixtures up to 30 feet as proposed in the submitted plans. Um, I know I know the applicant had spoke with regards to installing um, that, that they would find suitable replacements which meet the requirement for uh, fixture G and FF. 
Um, and they they had requested the board to grant a variance. Um, we do have certain items in our zoning ordinance, which does gives us the flexibility to kind of uh, uh, adjust or tweak. Um, but in this instance, lighting is not one of those items in our zoning ordinance that grants us that that flexibility. So um, if they do want to request a variance, the Planning Commission does have the ability to make a recommendation um, so that way they can apply to our Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, but, uh, but, but as far as procedure goes, if the Planning Commission wants to move in that direction, that would be the, the process. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Um, can you tell us in what we have before us that will show what the effect of that fixture X would be? So if I mean, if we're actually making a recommendation on a uh, review for the variance, I think I need to understand a little better. Um, as far as I need to pull up the plans, but but as far as as far as fixture X, I mean, the, the reason why we have the cutoff fixtures is to make sure that the glare from the um, lights not only don't glare onto adjacent properties, but it also keeps the light pointing down. So it's also, uh, uh, they call it night sky. Um, it, it's a night sky provision. So that way the light doesn't reflect up and, and, um, and you know, cause light pollution. Um, so those are the primary reasons. It would depend on where they specifically were um, planning on installing the fixture X uh, uh, light poles. And I'd have to pull up the plans and, and take a look at the specific locations where they're gonna where they're gonna identify those. So. As the applicant, do you know what the locations are for the floodlight installations? Come on up. Please come up. No, I just got the plans here. That might be easier. Okay. It's this one. Can you see, Brian? Um, <laughs> can you see? Sorry, I have a lot of paperwork nope. as Brian knows. That's okay. So this is where we want to um, set all of our uh, floodlight models. We're going to have various shielding on them to show customers like with and without shielding. So we're going to have full cutoff on, on a lot of these uh, floodlights. And these are all going to be a series of wood poles here. And it's basically our outdoor uh, protective lighting that we're going to have here uh, that we fixtures that we put on um, wood poles. So that's going to be directed and only in short increments of time. So this is the actual location in this green space mm -hmm. between this parking Here's area. The here, yeah, this is uh, 275, and then this <coughs> is the industrial park here with Coca Cola Next Tool LLC. Professional pump, so they're they're only going to be turned on maybe five ten minutes at a time, um, and it's very, you know, the frequency is not going to it's not going to occur like every night. We're only going to maybe once twice a month, at the most would be two times, and it's going to be directed this way. So and our the uh, aiming angle is going to be um, basically the. Uh, the fixture will be faced uh, 60 degrees from horizontal, but we can we can pitch it at 45, so it directs down further. Um, we just want to show the op the optics of what the distribution pattern looks like. Um, and is that for customers floodlight fixture that you want the exception for? Is that part of one of the lighting zones? So every time you turn that lighting zone on, it comes on, or can you operate that independently? So it's going to be on network control. So we're going to have uh, like a smart device or like a probably you know a, a laptop out there where we can control a bank of lights we can turn off area lights here and here so we can just demonstrate this model um, so it's going to be dark around here and we just want to show demonstrate the uh, distribution pattern of that floodlight as opposed to maybe and then maybe turn that off and then turn this one on just to show shielding no shielding so we have different variations of shielding for our floodlights. Um, and it's gonna be a network control. So basically, the area lighting we can shut off, we can shut off any of these lights in this area just to demonstrate that model. And then it 
once uh, the account manager or the engineer is done, then we just, uh, the, the uh, mm -hmm. software um, or the um, lighting system will uh, turn back on within 15 minutes to the area lighting uh, system. So. And this is just one light. Yeah, this X, it's, it's, so just, this it's is, just one light. So this is like a demonstration area. We'd have a series of um, a couple of uh, different wattages of floodlights here in this little bank. And oh, then, the three uh, and here, the four? Okay. Yeah, we're going to have cobra heads, <clears throat> full cutoff. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to have some other security lights, uh, like what we call barn lights, and with different varying wattages. With mm. uh, cut, And they're all going to, everything here is going to have um, shielding, no shielding. We want to show a difference between this, you know, at this wattage, 297 watt LED, no shields, and then with, you know, what we call barn doors. So it's a full shield. It's almost like a spotlight, and it cuts off all the and that's the lateral uh, illumination. And that's here. Uh, right, right here. So it, right they're here. all going to be directly okay. this, uh, south, this way, south, Ow. and this property right here with industrial park madam chair um <clears throat> i did highlight i, I was looking it up on uh, google <clears throat> earth and it, it does look like that there's a 60 foot tree buffer between the dte property and the properties to the the south that you know and, and i can actually using our display technology i can put it up on the television if the planning commission would like but it looks like it's pretty well grown um, so as far as as far as adverse impact, it, it if all the floodlight fixtures are on the south side of the building and they're pointed towards the south, um, as long as they're not any that are closer to the road, I don't think it would have an adverse impact. It just it doesn't comply with our zoning ordinance. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I forgot about this whole uh, tree line along here. It's pretty thick, um, so that would act as a buffer said um, for this property. Do you have um, any other buffer other than space between you and the highway? I mean, this is quite a distance. Uh, I have a scale here. Um, but for where this this little um, grouping of LED floodlights is the only area that we're going to have the floodlights, and they're all going to be aimed this way. They're not going to be aimed towards uh, 275. Other questions or comments? No. Mm -mm. Okay. I don't think they, I think I agree they aren't going to offend anybody or they, nobody will probably even see them with Me the too. trees and, and the fact that they're in the back of the property. So I thought you could limit timing and, and things like that to make sure they're not, I, I don't anticipate you out there at one in the morning turning them on and off. No, but. I don't want to be out there at one in the morning. <laughs> 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 just yeah. yeah. All right. So let me to be clear, um, from Director Akers, uh, it's a request to approve their request based on the recommendation. Uh, the recommendation does, uh, identifies what's allowed and not allowed in our zoning ordinance. So then we could make part of our recommendation that they would, we would support, the Planning Commission would support them seeking the variance. Yes. And that would take care of tonight's work and get them on the right path for the rest of their, their approval process. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Great. Thanks. Are, uh, uh, no. No. Okay. Got mine. Okay. Got mine. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Anyone in the audience? Questions or comments on this agenda item? Anything else from the commission or staff? Are we ready to make a motion? Madam Go back Chair. And forth. <laughs> Commissioner Boynton. <laughs> no, I'm poking fun at my fellow commissioner. Um, I grant that we, I'm sorry, I move that we grant, where is it? The applicant, uh, DTE and Matt Velasco, an amendment to the existing site plan for DT Energy to perform an outdoor lighting upgrade and add additional site lighting for display purposes on site located at 8001 Haggerty Road. 
The site is located in the existing DTE Western Wayne Center location on the east side of Haggerty Road between Ecorse Road and Tyler Road. Subject to the recommendations from staff, letter dated March 22nd of 2019, also to include a recommendation for variance on point number 1B concerning the fixture X floodlight, which is not allowed by the current zoning ordinance for the applicant to apply or seek a variance from the BZA. I say that right? Yes. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. We have support from Commissioner Kelly. Do we have the motion? Pretty good, Ms. Harmon. Okay. Um, this is just a uh, yeah or nay vote. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And you have the recommendation for what's recommended in tonight, and you can move forward with our uh, BZA. Thank you, gentlemen. Item five on tonight's agenda is the Quirk Park Splash Pad Site Plan Amendment. The applicant is Van Buren Township, the Downtown Development Authority, requesting an amendment to the existing site plan for Quirk Park for park improvements, including the construction of a splash pad. The location is 46270 Ayers Road, or Ayers Avenue. The site is located at Quirk Park on Township Hall Campus. Quirk Park is on the east side of Quirk Road and south of Tyler Road. And we'll start with presentation by the applicant, Ms. Lossinger. Hello, good evening. Um, the Splash Pad project was initiated by the DDA about a year ago. And working with McKenna um, and their design team, Russell Designs, we've been able to put together what we feel is a very valuable asset um, for the community. During the design phase, we've collaborated with the Department of Public Works and Parks and Recreation to develop a plan for additional improvements at Quirk Park that are in line with their master plan. The concept has been presented to and well received by both the Township Board and their Parks and Recreation Committee. <coughs> additional partners in this project are the Van Buren Civic Fund, who have committed a contribution of $200,000, and Mr. Chuck Covington, who will be covering the cost of a memorial for his daughter, Egypt. Included in your meeting packets were a flow chart of the process, a narrative of the next steps, and answers to questions that I thought would be relevant for you. Um, at this time, I'm gonna introduce Mark Russell and Maudie Smith of Russell Design. They're gonna walk you through the plan and the features, and then they'll address any questions that you have. Great, thank you so much. You're gonna see most of that up there. But I'll put this, here. this is a drawing that we presented to um, the board last week or last meeting, and then also has been the concept that we've developed and carried through to the various uh, commissions and DDA um, board and what have you. Uh, Mine's gonna run through the drawings um, that we had presented the actual plans to the board. And uh, we are in process of submitting our drawings for bid tomorrow, with your blessing. And um, they will be posted on Mitten. And uh, I think that um, Lisa has presented the schedule in your packet. Uh, we can certainly address that and, and timing of that if you have questions on that uh, going forward. But happy to answer any questions. Body will go through the presentation and then uh, Turn it over you folks. Great, thanks so much. Thanks, Mark. Um, okay, so um, this is Quirk Park, located um, just right on Tyler Road and Quirk Road, I'm sure you are familiar with, right behind this building. Um, so we will move through these. Oh. <coughs> okay. <It's getting laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Um, so what we'll be removing um, some asphalt paths in the park as well as the existing playground. Um, that's pretty much everything that we're removing um, besides lawn. And then moving forward, this is the plan for the park. Um, OK, I'm going to start up in this northeast corner. This is the existing parking lot that is there right now. 
Um, because of construction, a lot of that parking lot is going to um, be just might wear and tear from construction, so it might get destroyed. Um, we've asked that they replace that um, parking lot as well as restripe it with handicap accessible spaces. Um, and then moving along, we have um, as asphalt paths throughout. And then coming down here, we have the um, a proposed pavilion. This just allows people to uh, maybe rent it out for a picnic or whatnot. Um, it's a, a little distant from the splash pad, splash pad and playground itself. Um, just an area to kind of escape from there. And then um, moving along, this is that existing pavilion that is already out there, the concessions building. Um, that will remain. We have added um, changing rooms right north of that area. Um, there'll be two changing rooms. They'll just be, there won't be plumbing and lighting or anything. It will just be uh, a bench and a baby changing station just for people to kind of get in, get out, put their suit on, and then go play. Um, and then moving along, we do have um, the splash pad. The splash pad has uh, multiple components um, for all different ages. Um, it's just going to be a great experience for people to get out and play and parents to get involved. Um, below that splash pad, we have seating. There's four tables. Um, allows parents to, whatever, bring picnic, sit around the splash pad. And then there's also uh, shade sails above that seating. There are just 20 by 20 by 20 shade structures. Um, we had talked with other communities, and that's one of the things that most of the communities were lacking with their splash pads, because they wanted to have um, shade. So we provided that, and then we also have plantings around that to kind of enclose the area, make it a nice space for the parents and children to sit in. And then um, moving west, that will be the new playground area. Right now it's just a blank circle, but we are hoping to have a play structure and then uh, three sets of two of swings. And north of that is um, the berm. There'll be trees and just um, lawn on that berm. There'll be a lot of excavation on the site, and we thought that'd be a nice area to put the excavated dirt as well as um, make a nice enclosure around that splash pad for people to enjoy it and the playground. Um, south of the playground, that is the Covington Memorial. We've had the opportunity to work with Mr. Covington, and he um, had input in this memorial. Um, what it is is there's a planting area, and then um, there's uh, some sort of memorial within that planting area. We're working with Mr. Covington on that, and then um, planting surrounding that as well as benches. Um, the remainder of the area here, that'll be lawn, so people can come and just bring their chairs, whatever they like, and lounge around and enjoy the area. Um, I don't think I missed anything on that. Mark will let me know if I did. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. The existing pavilion to the south. Um, that will remain, but we will, we have added uh, concrete around there just for additional seating for people around there. Um, the landscape plan, we've Stuck with a minimal landscape plan, we've incorporated trees, a lot of shade trees, um, minimal perennial plantings, and then a lot of lawn so people can, again, picnic and whatnot, bring their chairs, sit around. Um, this is the changing room, as you can see. Just two changing rooms. Here is the bench, and then here is the changing station. Same for each room. And then that is some, some details. 
Um, just have to wait for this to load a bit. <laughs> um, here are the splash pad components. Um, again, it's for all ranges of age. Um, the components for say three to five year olds are closer to that pavilion area that, or to the shade cell area I showed before so parents can sit down with their younger kids while the older kids are kind of going wild with the big splash huge bucket toys. Um, and then What is it? <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> OK. Um, we've also been working with McKenna Associates on the signage. This is just some um, what am I, conceptual signage. Um, I know that they have been working to get signage throughout other areas, and that is still in the process. And then here you have the splash pad, just some images of the splash pads and how all the kids will enjoy it. And then I don't know, um, we do, we did get that review letter. Um, we do have a response to the review letter. I don't know if you want me to go through the items. Sure. Tell, okay. us, tell us what your responses were and then we'll also hear from Director Akers. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay, Lisa is passing out a copy. So, thank you. Um, I believe your number four on the review letter is our number one. So, that, that's the lot. Um, we will indicate the boundaries of the two campus parcels, and we will add zoning classification for the subject parcel on our plans. Um, as Mark stated, we are working on the plans right now, and we should have a new set to you shortly. Um, for the dimensional requirements, um, we will also provide boundaries and a legal description, the parcel ID numbers, and the acreage of each campus parcel. Um, parking and loading, we will add the dimensions of the proposed handicapped spaces on the new set of plans, and we will provide a detail for the handicap sign and post. Um, we will also work with the staff to evaluate the existing and future parking spaces that will be required. Um, for the landscape and screening, um, we will calculate the open space to ensure the proposed tree planting requirement of one tree per 3,000 square feet is met. Um, currently, we calculated this area um, of the, the disturbed area is 2.37 acres, so that would be 34 trees required. We are currently um, proposing 18 trees, and then there are 11 existing, so we are at 29 currently. Um, lighting, we, we won't have any lighting at the park. Um, and then I think, oh, signs, we were working with um, the design with McKenna on that, as mentioned. And then um, I think that is it. If I may, uh, one thing that we need to uh, recognize in the, in the open space calculation, too, is that the uh, subject parcel actually comprises uh, over 10 acres, and that's a south parcel. We, we all know that the, this uh, piece of property is divided into two parcels. Uh, so the south parcel is approximately 10 acres, of which the 2.37 acres is, is the disturbed areas that, that Mahdi mentioned. We, we did not go out there and actually physically count the trees around the perimeter of the property to the south. Uh, I don't know how many really exist there. Um, but if it's uh, the desire of the commission, you know, we could certainly provide additional trees. Uh, we feel that the trees along the perimeter of the property provide the buffering to the adjacent neighbors and, and to the uh, roads to the, to, to the south and neighbors to the south and to the east. Uh, so, you know, what, whatever you guys decide to do, we can, we can certainly incorporate your needs there. Um, another thing I want to go back to is the playground. Uh, the exist, we know that we have an existing playground with a couple of sets of swings that are out there. We had those evaluated by a playground consultant. And they're all good. Uh, they're, they're missing a couple of hardware pieces for safety and what have you. Uh, but w the way that we've orchestrated or, or uh, created our documents was basically the contractor 
we're working with a, a, a vendor, much like we're working with a vendor for the splash pad, independent of the general contractor who will do the brunt of the construction. We're working with a company, Pentura, for the playground equipment and the site furniture. They've evaluated the existing structure. We have a proposal from them not only to uh, re uh, remove and relocate the existing uh, play structures and swing sets, but if, if the project uh, comes in favorably, then we'll have additional, potentially have additional money that we could upgrade that, that play structure to a new, new play structure, a new swing set. And then maybe not use what we have uh, currently there on this particular site, but maybe relocated elsewhere. So it's kind of a, a shell game, I guess, for now, until we really find out how the bids come in for the GC portion of the project, which Madi just mentioned. And um, the play components in the, in the splash pad are a done deal. We're going to do that. Uh, but how everything else comes in uh, will predicate uh, how we handle the, uh, the future of the playground whether or not we relocate the existing, which we have a solid number for, and we have a solid number for the new structure uh, that, that uh, has gone through the approval process uh, through Lisa, Matt, and, and various uh, boards. So uh, just a little bit of extra information on that. I don't know if I've confused you. I didn't mean to, <laughs> but um, it's, uh, it's gonna be a great park. It really is. I think it's gonna be a highlight in this community. Uh, we are, um, oh, that work? Hello? I don't know. Um, so anyway, uh, I think that we, um, working with Matt and Lisa, we've done a great job, and they've done a great job, and uh, certainly, you know, Grace has been a good uh, good part of that conversation as well, and, and Melissa, right? Is that her name? Melissa. She's no longer here, so we kind of forget about her. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, I think it's going to be a great park. There's going to be a great asset to this community, a good, good asset to this park. And uh, we look forward to its completion. Great. Thank you so much. Lots of good detail. Director Akers, you've conducted the review. We have a few replies, but you want to walk us through? Yeah, sure. What I'll do is I'll go through uh, the, the requirements or, or the, the comments that are in my review letter. Um, I did get a chance to briefly see their uh, comment letter before the meeting, and it looks like they had addressed all of the, the concerns. But, but I'll, I'll go through just some of the comments that we have. Um, looking through the letter, the first comment that we have with Lot, we're just simply asking them to draw the parcel boundaries on the site plan. Uh, for dimensional requirements, um, we are unable, the new building that they're proposing, we're unable to determine the, the setbacks um, from the existing lot lines because they're not in the plan. However, um, the zoning or the way the zoning ordinance defines a lot. We're actually able to consider both parcels a single lot for setback purposes. So based upon the proposed location of the structures and the lot definition, it is highly unlikely that the proposed structures would run into any setback conflicts because it's very centrally located on the property. Um, however, we still still would like the plans to reflect that and show them, but, but I don't think there's going to be any issues with that. Um, with regards to parking and loading, we did ask that the applicant uh, depict dimensions of the new barrier-free spaces because we want to, you know, verify that it meets ADA requirements, and then also provide a detail sheet for the van accessible handicap sign and post, uh, which they had indicated they would provide. Uh, we're going to ask that the applicant provides on a revised portion of the site plan a table which summarizes existing parking for Cork Park and the Township Hall property and takes into account our calculation of 23 spaces uh, needed for the splash pad. Um, one of the things that I'm going to be asking the Planning Commission is as this project is an is a internal township project, um, I'm asking that the Planning Commission uh, authorize staff to work with the, uh, the, the applicant to evaluate parking on the site. I don't think we're, we have any parking concerns because um, I actually, the parking lot, which is immediately adjacent to the, the entrance where the splash pad is going to be, has 80, some 80 parking spaces. Um, so I think we're going to have enough parking, but I still want to make sure that evaluation is done and I still want to make sure it's taken into consideration. With regards to landscaping and screening, the two comments that I had were with regards to open space landscaping. I do want to clarify when I was referencing open space landscaping, because we limited the scope of review just to really, because Quirk Park's a large park, um, and they're only improving a, a, a 
smaller area of the park. So we only are really looking at the area that they're improving. Um, so when I was looking at the one to 3,000 open space calculations, I'm really more interested in the lawn areas that you're depicting on the plan as opposed to the whole park. Because there's there's other items, there's other uh, amenities in the park, like soccer fields and different things that, that you know, you're not going to plant trees on. <laughs> so, uh, so really, I was just more interested in those small areas. Again, it's a requirement that I think they meet. I just want them to summarize it on the plan. Um, the last comment that I had made was with regards to site lighting and, and you know, I, I didn't identify any site lighting on the plan, just indicated that if there's any in the future that we have to review the light fixtures. But um, again, they had indicated that there's no proposed lighting associated with the project. So based on that, uh, staff uh, makes the recommendations that the Planning Commission approve the site plans dated March 18th, 2019 with the following conditions. Um, that they revise them to include items A through K, which are listed on my staff report, uh, that the township consider uh, combining the two parcels into a single parcel, um, just because I think it could uh, alleviate potential future issues um, if there's any you know, development concerns that come up. Um, just something that the township should consider. That the Planning Commission grants authorization to township staff to review parking to ensure that it's sufficiently addressed uh, per the zoning ordinance. Um, and then comments with regards to exterior lighting. And then I had asked that the, uh, the splash pad be reviewed by the township fire marshal for compliance. Um, I did, uh, after I had wrote the review letter, I did ensure that the fire marshal was looking at the plans for review. And I had given a copy of the review to the planning commissioners prior to the meeting. Um, essentially, the only comment that the fire marshal had was, was there's an existing gate off a of Cork Road um, where one of the trail entrances are, and the fire marshal asked that if it remains that, that we ensure that a Knox box is installed. But otherwise, uh, the fire marshal has approved the recommended plans. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Great. Thanks so much. Questions or comments from the commission for the applicant or staff? Anything from the audience? Can't see everyone, but yell out if you've got something. Thanks. <laughs> I wondered if um, you had a chance to show Grace and Luke and if they had any input for us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right, if there are no questions or comments, are we ready for a motion? Madam Chair. Mr. Mr. Kelly. To grant the applicant Van Buren Township Downtown Development Authority an amendment to the existing site plan for Cork Park for park improvements, including the construction of a splash pad located at 46270 Ayers Avenue based on the analysis subject to the conditions detailed in the staff review letter dated March 22nd, 2019, and the Van Buren Fire Marshal letter dated March 25th, 2019. Support. Support. Uh, support, Commissioner Boynton. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Get busy. It'll be summer before we know it. <laughs> we are to general discussion in tonight's agenda. Director Akers, Director Best, anything for general discussion? Okay. Audience, any general discussion items? Commissioner? If there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Commissioner support. Bud, support Commissioner. Boynton, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, and thank you. We're adjourned. Good meeting. Lots going on.